Well, good evening, everybody. This is the fourth and last in a series of lectures on Germany in the Second World War. Uh, I ended my last lecture last month by suggesting that it was increasingly fear that kept ordinary Germans behind the regime to the end, even though the vast majority of them knew by the middle of 1943 that the war was lost. Fear of retribution by the Allies, fear of retribution by the Jews, whom they imagined were steering the Allied war effort, but also fear of what the regime itself would do to those who stepped out of line. Increasingly, through 1944 and in, on into 1945, the positive forces that had previously held German society together were replaced by negative ones. This applied to the armed forces as well as to the civilian population. Fear played a vital role in keeping the men fighting on. Many felt a strong nationalist commitment to prevent Germany falling into Soviet hands, and I can see what I'm writing notes here. Um, and a substantial proportion of the younger troops were also strongly Nazi, continued to believe in the cause and its leader. But more important than either of these two factors was a, a desire on the part of the troops not to let their comrades down. However, increasingly, they kept fighting out of sheer fear, fear of what would happen to them if they surrendered to the enemy, especially on the Eastern Front, fear of their superiors, should they show signs of flagging. <coughs> Over the whole course of the war, it's been estimated that German courts martial tried a staggering total of three million cases, of which only 400,000 were brought against civilians or prisoners of war, and the rest involved offenses by members of the German armed forces themselves, ranging from undermining morale to cowardice, from theft of food parcels to deserting the ranks. Looting, rape, and the maltreatment of civilians in occupied areas, by contrast, were hardly prosecuted at all. Hitler himself issued guidelines laying down the most draconian levels of punishment. As a result, no fewer than 30,000 men were condemned to death in the German armed forces during the war. At least 21,000 of these, according to the best estimates, were executed. This can't contrasted strongly with the experience of the German armed forces in the First World War, when the number of executions carried out by courts martial reached the grand total of 48. Terror was also ratcheted up on the home front. The Ministry of Justice declared at the beginning of 1940 that, and I quote, during the war, the task of the judicial system is the elimination of the politically malicious and criminal elements who, at a critical moment, might try to stab the fighting front in the back, as, of course, in 1918 and the imagination of the Nazi regime. And as soon as the war broke out, the death penalty was applied to anyone convicted of publicly trying to quote, subvert the will of the German people to military self-assertion, end quote. Well, another decree made theft carried out during the blackout also punishable by death. Anyone causing a disadvantage of any sort to the German war effort could be executed. <coughs> by early 1940, more than 40 different offenses, many of them, like the ones I mentioned, extremely vaguely defined, were punishable by execution. As a result, the numbers of offenders on the home front of civilian offenders sentenced to death rocketed from 137 in 1939 to nearly 1,600 in 1942 and nearly 4,500 the following year. Altogether, nearly 16,000 offenders were sentenced to death by the courts during the war. Uh, some 12,000 of these were executed, mainly by guillotine, while the rest were commuted to imprisonment. Half of these offenders were German, the rest were foreign workers. Hitler argued in 1942 that, as he said, in war, it's always the best men who get killed. All this time, he went on, the absolute ne'er-do-well is cared for lovingly in body and spirit in prison. There's an aerial photograph of the Plitzen say, jail in, in Berlin. And to stop the balance of the nation shifting towards degenerate elements, he ordered 20,000 criminals taken out of the state prisons, such as this one in 1942, and transferred to the SS for what was called in the documents quite openly extermination through labor in a concentration camp. Meanwhile, the total prison population of the Old Reich in the borders of 1937 grew from 100,000 at the beginning of the war to 158,000 in 1944. A quarter of these were women, compared to less than 10% in 1939. Prisons <coughs> had always been more important in controlling deviance and dissent than concentration camps had. But from 1942 
the camps became a key source of labor for the German war economy. Their population rocketed from 21,000 in 1939 to 110,000 in September 1942 and 715,000 at the beginning of 1945. State and party terror reached their height in the final months of the war as they were applied ruthlessly to an increasingly war-weary population. A summary justice, if it can be called justice, was meted out to anyone favoring surrender or negotiating with the enemy now advancing through Germany. People were condemned on the spot and hanged in public. The role of coercion and terror in keeping German fighting on, Germans fighting on, I think, should not be underestimated. 